Any recommendations you can give to some of our viewers who are greenhouse operators? If you're not growing with lights, you shouldn't be in the industry. Yeah. Uh, you want to be in greenhouse, you want to compete with the market and have a good quality, sustainable product, you have to, to grow with lights. So LED is a lot more sustainable, it's a lot more energy efficient, and I think the technology is has finally caught up or surpassed HPS. Hi, Craig Adams here with California Lightworks. We're back at Green Vibe in Salinas, California. We're two years into this project. It's five one-acre, really state-of-the-art greenhouses for cannabis. They've really spared no expense as far as equipment, layout, lights, and they've been up and running for a good year now, and uh, they're harvesting uh, the, uh, the rooms full of plants. So we're featuring our Mega Drive Linear 400 fixtures. We have 12,000 lights in all, a uh, light level of 700 micromoles, which is uh, pretty high for Northern California, but really guarantees maximum yield. All centrally controlled with the Mega Drives along the wall and all the power cables go into the Mega Drive. So we have no power drops, no conduit, no electrical wiring in the greenhouse at all, which was a massive savings in installation. We always also can control the lights through the power line, so we don't need separate data cables for control. We can run these through our own controls, or we can run them through their Priva control system, which they have here, which we'll take a look at. I'm here with Aldo Juarez, yes. who's vice president of farming operations. Yes. You have uh, four major facilities now. Yeah. Uh, this is called Green Vibe. Uh, Green Vibe, which is about 220,000 square, square feet. You yeah. also have Wave Rider across the valley there, which is also 235. Then yeah. a new one, Hilltop. Uh, that's closer to 200,000 for nursery. Oh, and that's where you do all your you'll do your beds yes, there that's eventually. where we transition our nursery over that and way. you just acquired another one next door to wave Rider. what's it called yeah that one's going to be called green vibe green vibe yeah as well and that's another 200 another 250 000 square feet so you're closing in on a million square, square feet, feet of yeah. cannabis in the salinas valley yeah all under lights all under yeah. lights our lights yeah yeah and over half of it's under california lightworks and we're transitioning the nice rest. so this is the newest facility right Yes. So you built this really from scratch, the whole project? Yeah, there was three existing greenhouses, but we lifted them and we pretty much refurbished the whole greenhouse. And then we built two greenhouses from scratch from the ground up. Yeah, it all looks, it yeah. all looks new. And so how long have you been uh, working on this project? With construction and everything included, it's been about three years, but yeah. about one year, almost one year in actual cultivation. Right, yeah. and I know we've been working with you for at least two years. Yeah. Getting the lights yeah. slowly getting we'll together. Wave rider, and then we transition right. over here. To this. So this is a typical layout of our, our lights with our Mega Drive system. The power supplies are mounted along the wall. Each power supply runs uh, a row of 27 400 watt lights, so it works out uh, very clean for the wiring and the layouts along the Unistrut. And then we have exactly the same thing on, on the other wall with rows of 27 lights coming from the outside towards the middle. There again, the only work for the electrician is to wire the power supplies to the electrical panels, everything else done by normal uh, greenhouse labor. Now you've been flowering uh, for nine months or so. The only thing still to come is to get the rest of your power. We've been waiting for PG&E for the last two and a half years, three years. Yeah. So we're running on generators, which is not ideal. Um, but we're getting by. So we're only able to run around 70, 80% of the life. Which makes a big difference in yield. Huh? Well, yeah, either way, it does help out with yield. I mean, of course, that extra 20% of lights would definitely put us over sure. the top where we want to be. So you aim for a pretty high light level here, right? About 700 micromoles? Yeah, we have, it's a little over 700 as well. We're kind of averaging when we have them on. Which is pretty good. Yeah, which pretty is pretty good. good. For Salinas. Yep. Yeah, that'll, yeah. You'll maximize your yield yes. all year yeah. long with that. Yeah. yeah. Here you can see how the Mega Drive power supplies are lined up against the wall. Each power supply runs a single row of 27 lights. The only wiring is really to the power supplies. We don't have any wiring or outlets or GFCI plugs in the greenhouse facility at all. So it's a massive savings in installation, especially for electrical work. 
Uh, it's very easy access to all of the drivers. They are somewhat out of the sun and in a cooler environment than they would be if they were above the LED fixture like most traditional LED fixtures, which really shortens the life due to that high heat being up, up at the hottest part of the greenhouse and under the sun. So we also have an extra layer of electrical surge protection, especially from lightning and voltage surges. In fact, they don't have enough power here, so we're running off generators right now. Generators are really hard on electronic drivers, and there's been a lot of cases where they'll damage LED lighting. Here we have an extra layer of protection, so running on generators, voltage fluctuation, not a big problem. Yeah, well, this facility, we just, there was a lot of thought that was put into it. I mean, we wanted to maximize the square footage because there was going to be all cultivation for flour. Um, so, of course, we implemented rolling benches. Which so, you've got six foot benches. Yeah, three houses. We ended up adding a half a bench um, so that we can maximize it. Uh, and then two other houses, we just went six six benches yeah. so that we could have a little so bit more. So, you're really maximizing room. every square foot. Yeah, yeah, we're at like 85, almost 90% efficiency of the greenhouse. Which is incredible. Yeah. 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 So in this house, uh, they're just bringing in their veg plants. So they, they bring them in fairly large. They'll, they'll stay here just for a brief time before they flip over to flower. They have another facility, which also uses our lights uh, across the valley where they do all their veg and they're bringing them in uh, to fill these plants right after harvest. These plants are in a little bit later veg phase. They're just about to flip these to flower. They're only using some of the lights, but you can see really big, large, healthy veg plants, and these will flip the flower pretty soon. So here they're using six foot wide uh, rolling benches. They're doing five rows of plants on each bench in separate troughs, especially adopted to these square three gallon pots. They're using four fertigation emitters for each pot, so you get very even flow through the cocoa soil. So uh, nicely spaced, so you've got a lot of airflow through the bottom, getting some really nice results in flower. We're using uh, pretty much a blend of 70% cocoa, 30% PMOS. Yeah. And then a, a little bit of slow release just to help out and kind of keep us going. And then we're um, just irrigating, you know, any, depending on time of the year, anywhere from six to 10 times a day. Yeah. Um, you know. And that's 50, 64 that's all run water. from uh, Priva fertigation yes, system. Yes, yeah, it's all run from system. an automated system. It's, we're using Priva environmentals and Priva, fertig Priva fertigation. Um, and it's all run from a central head house and it's running the, the full uh, facility from one station. And there's 46 valves and around 55,000 plants. Wow. You know, per, per turn, you can say. So, this is the fertigation system. Here's the reservoirs for the RO water, which runs all of these five acre greenhouses, all run by a Priva water control and RO system. Here we have the nutrients automatically uh, mixed with the RO water and it's sent out to all the various greenhouses. RO system and fertigation mixing system, all run by computer, runs the entire facility automatically and the lights as well. So this can run take full advantage of all the uh, options of the Mega Drive lighting system. So you have zero to 10 dimming, so from zero to 100% intensity. It has two channels, white on one channel, red on the other channel, so you can alter the spectrum control. You can use white as a view mode if you're working uh, in the greenhouse and you just wanna visually see the true uh, colors of the plants. You can focus on the red channel, which is much more efficient, drives photosynthesis much heavier than the white channel. You can use that initially. So initially when you're dimming up using a photo sensor, when you start it, will first use the red at the lower light levels and eventually the white will kick in. That way you get the most efficient photosynthesis out of the light uh, spectrum automatically through the light sensor and the previous system and the two channel lighting of the mega mega drive system do you have an idea what kind of yield you're getting like per plant or per uh, square foot well, or? we always go per plant but it should be more realistically it should be done by square foot but right now just to use numbers we're getting around an average around three to three and a half ounces of plant yeah uh, here is probably close to be three at our other facility where we have consistent lighting we're we're above three we're possibly 
close to three and a half right now. Is that your goal here, three and a half? Yeah, we want to be at three and a half because we have a higher density and it's rolling benches. Right. So it'd be equivalent over there to having a little bit over a four ounce plant. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So this entire house is uh, late flower, very close to harvest. They'll be harvesting uh, every day for weeks and it, it's actually perpetual harvest. So there's quite a big yield here. Nice bud structure, a lot of purple flowers very little problems with yellowing or pests. Especially in Northern California, everybody loves these purple flowers. They're, they're really getting a premium price. And for, this is really April, May production, uh, looking very nice. This will only get better as we get further into the summer. Any other recommendations you can give to some of our viewers who are greenhouse operators? If you're not growing with lights, you shouldn't be in the industry. Yeah. Unless you're growing outdoor and hoops. Um, but if you want to be in greenhouse, you want to compete with the market and have a good quality, sustainable product, you have to, you have to grow it light. So LED is, you know, a lot more sustainable. It's a lot more energy efficient. And I think the technology is, has finally caught up or surpassed HPS. So is that mostly to give you better yield in the winter or you're using them all year long? We're using them all year, all, all year long. Yeah. yeah. Since we don't have enough power, even now that we're like tail end of spring, almost going into the summer we're still running on 12 hours because right. we're only running like 70% of the lights. Yeah. yeah. And you and I have been talking about experimenting with under canopy lights yeah. for yeah. greenhouse. Cause I think, especially for greenhouse, the percentage of A buds is a yeah. big, big factor in yeah. the price you yeah. get. Yeah. And it's not easy to get A buds all the way down into, especially when you have larger plants like you're growing. The goal with some under canopy lighting would be hopefully to maybe have to delete a little bit less yeah. and also have a more consistent crop with all your lower buds, at least, you know, having a little bit more size and yeah. or same maturity. Because, you know, when we're harvesting, a lot of the lower buds are still like a week yet. out yeah. or, you know, five days out. So you can tell they're a little bit more premature. How, how often are you deleafing the plants now? Uh, we usually do two deleafs. Yeah. You know, we do like a, you know, somewhere in the day, mid, mid 20 days and then somewhere in like early 40s, and then we finish the crop out right at 56, 58 days. So you're almost yeah. deleafing constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah every couple of weeks, every yeah. couple of weeks. Of course we do a skirt up before we move in, and then 20 some days we do a deleaf, pretty yeah. aggressive, and then we do a clean up like at 42, 43 right. days. Well, we're yeah. hoping that the under canopy lights will reduce the need to deleaf, because you'll get yeah. better buds down low, yeah. and you won't have that same problem of the shading. So maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll do a video when we put that system in and see. Yeah, how it does. no, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm excited about that. So this is the proof in the pudding. Uh, final harvest. See, they're getting a very uh, purple flower, which really demands a premium price. We're we're just in early May, so it's still fairly early in the season. But you can see they're getting a real nice yield, nice average flower size, very healthy looking plants. Well, I thank you, sir. It's a, it's, it's a wonderful result. And uh, guy, congratulations. Thanks a lot. That really yeah. beautiful design. Thank you. Thanks, right. Aldo. Thanks.